Now we begin part three, as is usual, is the second reading. However, we have a choice. We can have the, the letter, the reading from Colossians or 1 Corinthians. So I'm going to treat both of these in this section rapidly. You'll notice the second reading, both of these, and this is Easter Day is what? Have a change of life. A lot of you were there at the vigil last night and you went through your baptismal vows and you did all that. You held your candle. Okay. You can put the candle down, but you can't put the light down. You've got to live like that. It's amazing how the church on Easter Sunday, instead of whoopee, Jesus beat death, we're all great, says, you see, if you were raised, raised with Christ, seek what is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of, it's the same word, I'm quite sure, though. Uh, no, it isn't. That's right, phronite. All right, think about, think of what is above, not of what is on earth. Now, he's not talking about walking around, looking up at the sky and tripping over the fireplace or something, you know. He's talking about where is your mind? What preoccupies you? With all of this going on and the finances and the health care and the wars, you know, it's all real. But there's something much more real. Jesus Christ on the throne with the Father, having conquered death and offering to all of us victory over death and over fear of death. And that's what he's saying here, you see. So, um, it's moral exhortation. If all this stuff is true, let it change your life. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? No. This is because it's Passover. The uh, You know, all the theme. It's not Passover necessarily, but the theme is Passover, right? Which means unleavened bread. And that's what he's seeing. You see, clear out the old yeast, which is what they did in the book of Exodus, right? So that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. See, leaven, there's something of putrefaction or something of rottenness in leaven. It makes everything, you know, blow up and it's all full of gas and all that. See, unleavened bread is pure, clean, none of that. And that's why he uses that. You see, you are unleavened. Why? Because our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. The Lamb has been sacrificed. His blood is on the doorpost of our spirit. No destroying angel can touch us. We are bound to go to heaven if we just let the blood of Christ continually be our anointing. You see, those who are in Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh. They don't live that way anymore. Or look at Romans 6, which will be a big theme as Easter goes on. Don't you know that we who were baptized were baptized into his death? Uh, therefore, we're dead to this world. We're dead to these drives. We're dead to these fears. We're dead to these ambitions. That's not why we're alive. We're alive to love the Lord, to praise Him, to love one another, and to tell the whole world where life and happiness really lie. That's what we're doing here. Okay? For our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed, and we're, we're preserved by His blood. No destroying angel is going to come near us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old least yeast, yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see, that's Paul drawing immediate consequences from the resurrection of the Lord for the Christian's way of life. And he takes it by using all the imagery from Passover. You see? No more yeast. Throw it out. Have a fresh batch it's unleavened. Why? Because Christ, our Paschal Lamb, 
has been sacrificed and we are saved and our firstborn is saved and we are on our way out of Egypt where there's slavery. Slavery to the devil who holds this world in uh, captivity through the fear of death. How many people? Either you you cut that deal the way I want you to and, and, and make an extra ten or twenty thousand dollars for us or you're fired. But that's dishonored. Now what's he going to do? Through the fear of death, fear of diminishment, fear of getting fired, fear of not getting a job, he might go along with this. But if he's a Christian, he's going to say, I can't do that. And I'm going to have to trust my Lord Jesus Christ to get me another job so that I can support my family. See? So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, of darkness and greed, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, there's another uh, reading that you can also have here. Um, and that's uh, this one from Colossians. Huh? If you were raised with Christ, then seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He doesn't mean you walk down the street looking up at the sky and bumping into the, the lighting post. He means that your soul, your spirit, is fixed on what's really real. Jesus Christ with the Father. That's the Mass, isn't it? It's Jesus Christ with the Father, surrounded by the angels, right here with us in that bread and wine, to feed us, to care for us, to rejoice with us. You see, that's what he's saying. If you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. What he means is, you know, actually the Greek word is a little bit different. Um, ta ano fronite, which funny mom. Don't be preoccupied with stuff going. You gotta, heavens, you gotta feed your children. You gotta have a job. You gotta, you know, wait for the red light before you, before you, uh, cross the street. I mean, of course. But your preoccupation is with the Lord. And that's what he means here, you see. Think of what is above. What's above? Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, Our Lady, the angels, they're all there. Think of what is above. For you died, that's baptism, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. What is your real identity? You go to a shrink or somebody, what, they're going to help you find your identity. You don't need that. Your identity is Jesus Christ. Now, you can have emotional problems and get straightened out. Thank God we have these people. But your identity is that you are hidden with Christ, hidden with, with Christ in God. That's your identity. That's who you are. Uh, you are a child of God. You know, when they just began all the, uh, Black-white integration, the African Americans starting to move into the white areas of Chicago. And this um, family moved in, and the man of the house went out and uh, put a sign on the, on the lawn. Friends of royalty. <laughs> You're not going to look down on me. I'm a friend of the king. Uh, quite beautiful, isn't it? That you have that sense of dignity. You see, your life now is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. You'll be with him. You'll be shining like the angels. You'll be shining. You know, one of the English martyrs, as he was mounting the, the uh, scaffold to be decapitated, looked up to the sun and said, I'll soon be beyond yon fellow. Now that's faith, isn't it? His life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, it doesn't mean you don't notice that it's supper time. It just means that's not your preoccupation. Being successful, being comfortable, being whatever. You are hidden with Christ in God. That's a reality. And if you live it, everybody else is going to say, 
How did you get that way? And you can tell them about Jesus. So when Christ, your life, appears, when he comes back, you too will appear with him in glory. My gosh, look, there's Joe up there with Jesus. I didn't know that he would be that important. Well, it's because he lived his life with his eyes fixed on Jesus. That's why. And so you see uh, how these two texts, which the, the, the church says, take either one, they're both are moral exhortations based on the resurrection. Why? Because, you see, as we've already said, most, a lot of our moral capitulations come because of the fear of death. I've got to have this pleasure. I've got to see this movie. My friends will be talking about it. I've got to be angry at the man who cut me off. I've got, because I've got, all, all I've got is this life. No. Your life is hidden with Christ in glory. And when he appears, you will appear with him. You know, it's like, um, when I lived in Europe, I had a lot of friends. And somebody said once, you know, one of these days, we're going to elect a new pope. And you're going to be up there on the balcony with him. And people are going to say, who's that with Francis? <laughs> They're only kidding. But you see, uh, when he appears, well, look who's with Jesus. My golly, look at that. He's a big shot. There's millions of big shots. Because they love Jesus and obey him. And they keep away from those things that lead to death. And that's why, we, and that witness, oh my goodness. Huh? I know a family where they have six children. And you know, I guess the youngest must be about 10 or 12 now. And you know what they're doing? They're going to go to Europe and take a Down syndrome child and raise it in that environment where this uh, family can surround them. Now, you see, comfort isn't their greatest priority. I have such admiration for this family. And uh, they show that in many ways. Courage, standing up for pro-life, you know, uh, and their children, boy, do those children respect and love their and admire their parents. It's a beautiful thing. And so, uh, you see, when Christ your life appears, you will appear with him in glory. And who will be all those people around Jesus? All those who loved him, who preached him, who cared for him and the poor. Those are the ones who are going to be all around Jesus. The big shots, they'll be lucky to get in. And I hope they do get in. But if you want to be in glory with Christ, Recognize that he's risen from the dead and that he invites you to have a life that is preoccupied with his values and his interests, not your own. And if you do that, you will appear with him in glory. Amen.